Hey guys, here we are on set, and this is the day in the life of a second assistant camera. Alexa, stop. This is Dominic. Today he's working as a second assistant camera on a music video in Hollywood. He lives in this apartment in North Hollywood with four other roommates and he pays just over $800 a month. Dominic practices judging distance with the tape on his floor every morning. It's very important for assistant cameras to be able to judge exact distances, which I'll explain later. Every day Dominic starts out his day right with a little bit of exercise, hitting the floor and knocking out 50 push-ups and 50 sit-ups. For breakfast today, Dominic is just going to keep it light with a bowl of granola. Alright, off to set. Hey Dominic, how much do you usually get paid as a second assistant camera? Like a flat rate, then normally it's like 300 to 400 per day, or per, per you know, gig that I'm shooting. Usually people like in the union, union will make like a thousand, so. I still got some ways to go, but I mean, but it's cool. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm growing every day. For today's shoot, they rented out a studio. I usually look forward to shooting in studios since the space is designed for filmmaking, so it's usually a little bit easier. Downtown LA, straight with the party. Dominic, can you tell me about the music video today? So we're shooting a music video for uh, Stephanie. Uh, her artist name is uh, Sakrin. I've heard the song and stuff, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this visual turns out. Cool, everyone seems to be getting here at the same time. The crew was told to start unloading so they could be ready as soon as the studio doors open. Where are we in there? What's up, Bonnie? Oh, I think that's the director. Ready for your day? Do you need any help with anything? Hello. Hello. Right, I'm gonna bring the cart in. That's the camera cart. Most sets use them as a quick way to lug around important camera accessories. So I've never been on a set where they pass out name tags like this, because everyone's name is usually on their walkies anyway, but I guess I don't have to look at anybody's butt to get their names now. Alright, time for the safety meeting. All right, guys, so, uh, good morning, first off. One important thing the assistant director mentioned during the safety meeting is how dark the shoot is going to be, which means Dominic will have to work extra hard to make things safe and efficient. Let's do it. Let's get it started. Alright, now we can get started setting up the first shot. Yeah, I've used it before. Oh, thank you. Oh, they're passing out the call sheets. Not only does the call sheet tell you everyone's call time, but it also gives you a general snapshot of the day ahead. Hey, Dominic, what's that? Uh, it's the monitor, or it's the first AC monitor. So normally the um, first AC, who is James, he's gonna, he's basically gonna be like focusing off of it. I'm just gonna move it closer to him. That's the first assistant camera. As you could guess, he'll be working really close with Dominic today. Yeah, fall back on if you want to. Hey, is this your first time working with Dominic? Oh yeah, yeah. this is my first time working with Dom. Yeah. <laughs> so the main job for the first AC is to pull the focus. He uses a wireless focus puller that is connected to the camera and usually will pull focus from a monitor that's only for him. And that's why Dominic was practicing judging distance this morning, so that when he gets jobs as the first AC, he can pull focus better. Hey, what's that laser pointer for? It's meant to tell you the distance from where you're at to where your subject is at, wherever the laser pointer goes. So it helps you uh, when you're trying to focus. So you can go ahead and measure how far it is without getting the tape measure out. Wow, he's got a lot of tape. Tape is something used all the time on film sets, but the second AC is almost always going to have some. There's gaff tape, which I'm using right now, and there's there's a paper tape. So what I'm doing right now is just like putting the wires down so it doesn't like, you know, like trip over it or whatever with your foot. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then we have paper tape, which is more so for, uh, for camera stuff, because it's cool to put on a camera because it doesn't rip off the paint. You never have too much tape. <laughs> this lasts me like maybe like two, three months or so. Tape is used for actor marks too. So if I was to mark you like where you're standing at, I would just mark you down with tape. If I have three actors, I have one for blue, one for green, one for red. It gives them pretty much a identity, I guess you could say, for their scene or where they're supposed to be standing at. If you're looking to work on a film set, I suggest bringing a roll of gaff tape because people hate giving out their tape and you almost definitely need some eventually. Oh, yeah. They're passing out the shot list. It gives a breakdown of each shot planned to be filmed that day. It's important for a bunch of departments, but probably most important for the camera department. Uh, this is how I know um, what to start on the slate. With doing this series, I find that there's usually one piece of equipment that's most associated with one particular roll. So like for the first assistant camera, it's the focus puller. For the boom operator, it's the boom pole. Is it going in and out? And for the second assistant camera, it's definitely the slate. 
Since the first frame of every shot has the scene and take number, and since Dominic is labeling along with the shot list, the editor can be able to quickly and efficiently know how things were shot. All right, let's play slate in. Oh, speaking of the slate, sounds like they're ready for Dominic me. for the first shot. All right, scene one, take one, marking. Camera moves, camera moves. Everything you see on the slate is important for the Scene editor. So the roll slide. refers to film rolls like they used back in the day, but today usually people use digital storage cards, but they're all the same. They can fill up really quickly, and the editor needs to know which take is on which card. Scene one, bravo, take one, marking. And when Dominic claps the board together, that's to sync the audio. The editor is going to take the visual of the clap and the sound of the clap and sync them perfectly together for each take. Even the white lines on top of the slate are there for a reason. Since the color temperature can change from shot to shot really right. easily, if the white lines look different, the editor can instantly know. All right, scene one alpha, take one, soft sticks. Did you hear Dominic say the phrase soft sticks there? That's something second ACs will do if they have to clap the board a little bit softer because it's close to somebody's face. Two, two soft sticks. Cut. Finally, all the sound shots are done. Now we can make some noise. Since there's no sound to sync, he doesn't even need to clap the board or say the scene or yeah, take number. One thing that he does need to do differently is to circle MOS on the slate, as well as stick his fingers between the board as a code to the editor that there's no sound and he won't be clapping it. Something else that's fun with music videos is since there's no sound, they can usually just play the song to help with the timing. Well, most of the time this is fun, but if the song sucks, it's not fun to hear it on loop for 12 hours. Luckily today, I was really feeling the song, so I didn't mind at all. Hey Dominic, why do you have a tiny slate? Since it's so small, it can fit inside the tight frame. It's like we're on a hundred right now. So since it's like so tight, it's like hard to see this or see the whole thing in frame when it's a hundred millimeter. But if it's like, it's a small one like this, you can fit the whole thing when it's like a tight shot and it's like, just like right here. And cut, that's lunch. Yay, lunch is here. And it's pizza. So it's kind of an unspoken sin to serve pizza for lunch on a film set. I guess it's because it's seen as cheap, but honestly, I'm never mad about it because pizza is good, you know? <laughs> All right, guys, we're back from, uh, from lunch. We are back from lunch. All right, back in. Ooh, looks like they're setting up for a dolly shot. A dolly shot is where a camera is placed on a track to get really smooth movements. Even though it's for the camera, it's actually the grip department's job to assemble the dolly and not the camera department's. Hey guys, so it looks like they're gonna be on this scene for a while, so let's go check out the other parts of the studio and see if we can get a tour. Hey! So I just asked the office manager to give me a tour and turns out the studio has a bunch of other cool rooms. The first one they show me has a rotating floor. The second one is just a big industrial warehouse looking space and it comes with a boxing ring, it's so cool. This other room was really neat. They made it look like an airplane. This type of set is actually really common because obviously you can't film like in a real plane and they're pretty common in scripts. They told me this room is just being finished up and it's so cool, it's an above ground pool with two windows that you can shoot through. Plus you can go up the stairs and shoot down into the pool as well, really neat. Turns out they told me that the room that we're shooting in is actually the coolest room that they have and it's the one that gets booked the most. And they showed me why when we were on break. Not only can you change the lights in this hallway but it can be matched to music. Also, this room comes with a sick rain feature with three different settings, and I have no idea why we're not using it. All right, let's head back to set and see what we missed. Hey, that looks familiar. Got enough grip. Yeah, snorri cam, coming at you live. Not live, because this is recorded. <laughs> hey, Domina, can you tell me what gear you have in your camera bag? I got tape in here, uh, other tools. There's a headlamp, headlamp that's in here. Little box of like just little tools, like screws and stuff. Just little stuff that you may need on set. So sometimes a shot may require a tail slate. Oh, wait, 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 don't cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. This means the second AC will slate at the end of the shot instead of the beginning. To communicate the tail slate to the editor, Dominic will turn the slate upside down and then right side up. Tail slates should really be used sparingly though because directors love saying cut and then they miss the slate and you have a sad editor. Wait, don't cut, 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 don't cut. Tail slate? This is the last shot? Second last shot. Oh, second last shot, all right. While wow, time flies, they're already on the second last shot of the day. So there's a name for the second last shot on a film set. It's called Abby Singer. It's named after this famous first AD who came up with the idea to start wrapping unneeded equipment on the second to last shot. This idea ended up saving so much time and money that they named that shot after him. I don't know, to me it kind of seems obvious to do that. All right everybody, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for day one. Yeah. All right, that's a wrap. Even though they aren't filming here tomorrow, they're still shooting at a different location. This means Dominic can leave some things pre-built and it won't be as difficult as if they were shooting for the very last day. For Dominic, he has to make sure all the lenses and batteries and cables are put away. 
All right, guys, that's the end of Dominic's day. He's just gonna wrap up the rest of the stuff and then go on home to bed for another 12 hour day tomorrow. Let me know what you guys wanna see in the future for another day in their life and while you're down there, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.